That's, that's actually also how you meet the deity. That's what it means to meet the deity. Um, 100% purified. Purified of what? Purified of dualistic relationship. Um, the experience becomes non-dual. So great, great contribution. Thanks, my friend. Spot Thank on. Okay, question or comment from any, anybody else? In the meantime, I'll look through the chat. I guess there's two more from Gabriella. Yeah, Hi, Andrew, yeah. Gabrielle. Actually, this, um, this question Gabrielle. aptly follows on from, from what Glenn was saying, but in a different sense. Um, so he's talking about the pain. What I've been trying to do is delve into the light. So I've been trying not to be afraid of the light and go towards the light. But in doing so, I'm finding myself in like a stumbling block. So I'll get a lot of like colour in my meditations, which I find really kind of inspiring and kind of exciting. But I'm trying to come back to the feeling of neutrality. And then I'm kind of going down all of these like tunnels and kind of wormholes, um, different colours, um, especially purple. And then I find that I'm in this just it just becomes black. And this is like a regular thing in my meditation. And I, even though I'm trying to surrender to that and to embrace that that void, for lack of a better term, is my question is, is that the void? And, and, and Doug Chan, I've been reading a little bit, he talks about the, the luminosity of no appearance. Could it be defined as that? Or am I just searching, searching for meaning when I shouldn't be searching for meaning? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, great question, uh, great comment. Um, can I ask you what meditation you're doing that brings about this particular set of experiences? Oh, yes. Um, the one I was doing was actually the, the one that you were talking about returning to the source of the thought in terms of like a light ray. Oh, yeah, the sun is great. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's the sun rays meditation. Yes. Well, here's the deal. Um, great question. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to return to anything to experience the void. So two things are happening here. Um, what you're talking about is a reduction of the display. So remember what I talked about uh, last, last session a month ago? One of the biggest issues we have is we lose the essence in the display. We lose the emptiness and the luminosity, you could say. Mm -hmm. And so when you do, when you do um, particular practices like the sun and its rays meditation and others, um, in a certain way, like I mentioned, at least at first, it does help to lessen the display to recapture the essence. But this is where it gets a little bit tricky because what can be therefore implied is the display is somehow problematic. No, the display is not problematic. The essence is always on the display. It's just not recognized. At first, it helps to lessen it to, so to speak, recapture it or to recognize it. Um, and so that's actually one really important thing. There is nothing but the void. And I, I, again, I don't particularly like that translation of it. I prefer um, emptiness being translated as openness, transparency, freedom, fullness, because the void, for obvious reasons, denotes this annihilation kind of thing. It, it, it's not that. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not to say that you can't have an experience that is without display, the ground zero. That's what happens when we die. We return to ground zero when the entire display is removed. You do that every night when you fall into deep dreamless sleep. You're doing that to some extent when you return to these meditations. And so, so there's several things here. One is just that you don't have to go anywhere to see the void because that's all there is. It just has to be recognized. What you're experiencing is a, dis a reduction of the display into this kind of constituent aspect of these of these fundamental lights. And, and then that can take place through all kinds of experiences. The, it's interesting you mentioned purple. That's a color that's often brought up. Um, that's just a, a, a more, oh, what's the way to say it? A more parsimonious display. That's a display that, that hasn't been reified into thought, into form. No, it, it's basically the melting of the display back to in, into its luminous nature. See, you're returning back to the light source. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if, if there's zero, nothing like what Bob was talking about, the formless blank black light kind of thing. It doesn't matter if it's that. If it, do, it doesn't matter if these lights are arising or whatever. It doesn't matter if it's right here or now. Mm -hmm. 
these are all just different manifestations of mind, basically turned up or down, depending on which metaphor you want to use, with degrees of, of its display. And so I'll pause for a second to see if that's helpful for you, but that's what comes to mind, that um, you're temporarily re kind of returning on one level to the source aspect of emptiness, but emptiness is just as much essence as it is source. In fact, I think it's helpful, more helpful, to talk about as emptiness as essence, mm -hmm. because that means it's always available. If we think that somehow e essence or emptiness is just source, then that implies, well, I have to get back to the source, see? I have to return to the source. And, and then that's where that, that quality of like, this isn't good enough, this isn't right, I have to return to the source. No, you don't. Just recognize the source in the display, recognize the source as the display. So does that make sense? Do you see what I'm saying? It does, yeah. So my, my question, I guess, is how to deal with the feeling of disappointment. Because like being in the light is, being in that those kind of rainbow colors, you know, it's so exciting. And it feels so substantial. So how do we, how do we deal with that yeah. with that disappointment and the question of what's next? What's next on this kind of adventure down the tunnel? Right. Right. Well, like a Rinpoche once said, you know, expectation is premeditated disappointment. Mm. So the way to work with it is drop any expectation, and really. Um, Simply look and dissolve into the feeling of disappointment itself. So in other words, be as disappointed as you possibly can be, <laughs> right? Right? Really, I'm not kidding. I'm not being a smart ass here. The next time you feel the disappointment, that is implying that there's something missing. Mm -hmm. I've got to return to whatever, to these lights, to mm -hmm. this display. That's where spiritual practitioners turn into state junkies, or mm. what my friend Z talks about, God addicts. Mm. You become, okay, I've got to return to my little special state of consciousness. If you've done that, or you're doing that, you've just replaced the chain made of lead with one made of gold. Now you're just attached to your experiences. Mm. And that experience will never mature. Release it. And then really, I'm not kidding. Try this and get back to me. Go into that feeling of disappointment 100%. Don't, don't do anything. Don't try to get rid of it. Don't try to fix it. Don't try to reestablish the lights or whatever. Go into that feeling of disappointment 100% and see what that does. Because what we want to do fundamentally, and this is what I introduce with the practice of open awareness, what is brought to fruition, it brings about the great equality, this great democracy, one taste. It, it doesn't matter what's happening. You're feeling like crap. That's Buddha right there. You're feeling great, ecstatic, 4th of July, whatever. That has no greater status than the, the experience of feeling like total crap. And that's actually what constitutes the very highest stages in, in Buddhist language, transitioning to the very highest 10th Bhumi. No preference for samsara or nirvana. None. Zero. It doesn't matter. And this is why you can relate with, remember what I said last month with, with Krish, what Krishnamurti said, the secret to his happiness. I don't mind what happens. It's all perfectly pure. It's all Buddha nature. It's all the great completion, perfection, connection, whatever term you want to put to it. And we will spend, I am telling you, because of the power of our poverty mentality, our degraded reductionist view of things, we will spend a large part of our life really believing this. Can it be this obvious? Can it be this simple? Yeah, but simple doesn't always mean easy. It is that simple. So for you, no expectation. Expectation is premeditated disappointment. The next time the expectation arises, the next time the disappointment arises, go into that 100%. What is it like to be with that 100%? And then I'm not going to tell you what you're going to find. I'd rather you discover it for yourself, but that would be my suggestion for you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Thank you, Andrew. Welcome. Okay, um, we're past time, but I will, if there's anybody 